Hey, good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Hey, you know, you probably wonder how come sometimes the uh, air conditioner man comes to your house and uh, you got a problem with your air conditioner and he wants to look at the furnace first thing. Well, that's because of what you've told him over the telephone as far as what the problem is. Um, you have a situation where they say, oh, it kind of cools, but it kind of doesn't. Uh, but I noticed that whenever I turn the thermostat off, the, the air handler wants to continue running or the air conditioner wants to continue running. Well, that indicates some kind of an electrical issue and what a lot of people don't realize is that the heart of the system is actually the furnace because the power or the control power for the entire system heating and cooling actually originates here in the transformer on the actual electric air handler or gas furnace. This particular case here, this is an electric air handler and it's an older one uh, without a doubt. And I, when I first got here this morning, of course, power was off so I went ahead and turned the power on thermostats in the off position but immediately the blower started running. First thing I've done is go ahead and check the uh, electric consumption and saw yes and in fact you know you can see that the switch that turns the blower on was passing electricity but this particular sequencer or switch here also turns on the first stage heating element along with the blower and that switch is stuck. So I doubt that you can see in here but right inside here is a series of sequencers that actually receive voltage from the thermostat that warm up and then close a series of switches in 30 or 45 seconds to stage on the, heat, the heating, heating elements. And if you look at this guy right here, it's really discolored and burnt, and I broke the top out of it. I just took my screwdriver and broke the top out of it, and sure enough, this was stuck together. Give it a little bit of a flip like that, and it just popped loose. Now, the only thing about it is if you just try to use it, you can get by in a pinch, because all it'll do will be weld itself shut, and then do the same situation. But um, you're not going to be using it until cold weather, so you're going to actually use it to get through the air conditioning season like this if you had to. Um, but then again, you have to remember the first time or two that you use it in the fall, it's going to stick that one element in again and continue to uh, to blow. And so what happens, or continue to blow warm air whenever the thermostat's satisfied. But see, what happens with that is it diminishes the capacity of the air conditioner because these are 5,000 watt heating elements right here. So if you've got a, um, a two and a half ton unit, which is 30,000 BTUs, and you're dumping 5,000 watts of heat right back in to the, uh, to the airstream that you're trying to cool, your heating capacity or your cooling capacity is going to go down as a result. So uh, that's what the whole issue is. So that's what we're going to do right now. I pulled the power, but I'm going to go ahead and double check the powers off, and we're going to go ahead and pull that sequencer out. I just hang that there and check check incoming power. Apparently I got the right breaker, so uh, the incoming power is dead. This here is a replacement sequencer right here. So this fella here, this is called a sequencer, and you apply your 24 volts across this right here, and that automatically sends 24 volts via the jumper wires to this other controller over here, the other sequencer. And what that does, that heats a little thermal disk, and that thermal disk causes a pin to, uh, to push upwards and closes these different switches in the order in which they're numbered. The very first one will be M1 and M2, which will be the blower and the first sequencer. Then the next uh, order would be the M3 to M4, and then M4 to M5, and then M5 to M6. And that takes about a minute or a minute and a half you know, to accomplish all that, which is why they call it a sequencer, because it sequences it in slowly over a period of time instead of just slamming a contactor or a, or a single double pull device to engage all the elements at the same time, put an excessive amp draw on your uh, incoming power supply, making your lights dim and, and, and the sort. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, replace this uh, one wire at a time, and then uh, we'll be done with it. That's our control, 24 volt control. One last wire, the control wire. Actually, this is the neutral or the common to the transformer on the control circuit. What's amazing is this thing, this control compartment, has a lot of room in it compared to the new ones. The new ones, you can't even begin to get in and do this kind of stuff. Make sure all the connections are secure. Make sure you got everything done the way you want them to do. Controls hooked back on. I should be able to go out, turn the power on, and the blower motor and the heating element will no longer be on. If you take a look, there you can actually see your burnt contacts. Can you see the burns and the pits on those two contact surfaces right there? And there's the pin I was telling you about right here, right in the center. 
is the pin that pushes up from the bottom when that thermo disc actually warps from the heat by the little heater that the thermostat sends to it and that's what closes that electrical switch right here. If you want individual stage control on this type of a controller, what you do, in other words, a W1, W2, W3 terminal on your thermostat, what you do is you cut your jumpers or remove your jumpers, and then you leave the common sides tied together, but then you put stage one on the first one, stage two on the second one, stage three on the third one, and etc., etc., and to get all of them multiple stages on the thermostat. And in conjunction with that, you can actually, uh, wire like the last stage if you have a, a, a furnace that's actually a little bit too big for you uh, for your structure say you have five elements or six elements you can actually take that fifth and sixth element and you can wire that last stage through an outdoor thermostat and set that outdoor thermostat below the uh, the extreme temperature that you average that you normally get and so when it does drop below those then and only then whenever the house no longer maintains or the furnace no longer maintains the heat the outdoor temperature will get so cold it'll close that thermostat and there that switch and then those elements will too come into play off of the thermostat and that'll boost your house back up to, uh, to comfortable temperatures. Okay we got the fire back on and I just now have the lady of the house turn the thermostat to the cool position. Here comes our cooling, our cooling relay. The cooling relay is going to be inside this control compartment over here. So uh, there's no heat on. I'll just verify that. All we have to do to verify there's no heat, I'll just check the individual elements. So what we've just done is verified that none of the four 5KW element banks are energized. It's nothing more than the blower motor, which is the purple wire right here. We've got the air conditioning turned on. So that should be beginning to draw the uh, the temperature down in the plenum. This particular unit here has an A coil up above instead of a return air or horizontal coil or an inverted A coil in the return air. A lot of them have it like that, in which case you got to get this blower compartment on there in a, in a quick hurry because you're short cycling the air and you're going to begin freezing up your coil. But this one here, the coil is in the discharge or the high pressure side or discharge area uh, of the fan so we can leave this off and all it's doing is drawing return air from the basement instead of return air from the duct down through the house. A good percentage of the time the no cooling calls are uh, as a result of the fan, the indoor fan motor failure. And of course that has nothing to do with the air conditioner outside, it's all in here. That's why when you call you need to have a good idea of what you're going to tell them as far as troubleshooting in your own mind is concerned. Always look for ice on your lines or on your air conditioner because that will give an indication to the technician before he gets here what to look for. And in the case of this one right here, pay attention to the temperature of the air whenever just the blower is running, whenever you turn the thermostat to the off position. A lot of times you'll have the blower motor or the blower set to run continuous just to destratify the heat within your structure and that's okay. But always pay attention to the temperature of the air, especially in the spring or late winter because that's the time that situations like this occur. You don't notice it sometimes throughout the course of the winter because the house is losing heat all the time. So that extra little bit you're adding whenever the thermostat's actually satisfied doesn't matter a whole lot. But uh, as soon as you actually need the cooling, you know, and you're adding that heat to it, it's uh, definitely a detriment and it's something that's going to have an effect on your system, the efficiency of your system, and also your build tremendously. So that's just a couple of things to think about. And uh, this was a quick and a simple one. And so you know what? This track meant 44. I'm out of here, guys. Okay guys, I'm in the truck and I'm leaving, but I had to turn the camera back on because uh, this is another one of those deals that's pretty neat about working out in the country. Um, just got to show y'all what the, uh, what the, what a tip I got. Have you seen a nicer, neater plate of brownies than that right there? Now let me tell you, that is superb. I've already had one and I'm going to try to eat about full more before I get home. That's about how much coffee I got. So see guys, there's another benefit to working in the country. And for real, this is Track Map 44, and I'm out of here guys.